So, Mr. Post, thanks a lot for your inspiring presentation and for the introduction. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our innovation showcase. In our presentation, we would like to tell you why it is important. Oh, okay. Okay, perfect. So we want to tell you why it is important to support young people and how you can bring an idea to life. So we are Hans Kaspar Meyer and Robin Stein. We both are currently studying at the Technical University Munich. We're studying food and brewing technology. And next to our study, we've developed our own product that we successfully introduced to the German beverage market this spring. Our product is called Bubble Blue. And as you see, it's blue. Actually, it's a beer mix, but Kaspar will tell you more on it later on. So as you all know, the main topic of this forum is innovation. But what is innovation? Per definition, innovation is a new idea, a more efficient device or process. But is, is, this, uh, but is this really all of it? We say no. Especially young people like us um, laugh and want no, uh, more products, but um, there sometimes is a big problem with products designed by big companies. Because the problem is that they are designed by another generation. Our generation wants and have the desire for products that are made from our generation. And here's another problem. Because young people often might have great ideas that may fit the needs of the market perfectly, but they don't have the money, courage, or network to introduce these products to the market. And at this point, this is where you as teacher, companies, or organizations have to plug in. Because supporting young people can be a great benefit for the young people itself, for the companies, and even for the society. So let's tell us why. So at first, why is it important for the young people itself to get supported? We think that a lot of young people have talents and skills that they don't really know at this point. And you can only find your hidden skills and talents if you get practical experience. And by getting practical experience, you actually will have to face and solve problems during this process. And when you solve problems, you will find out then it, that it really can be fun to work. Because if you get a problem solved, it's a benefit for yourself that may be very good for your future later on. So you may ask yourself why it's important for a university or organization to support young people. And we think that one of the most important points for companies is that um, you get recognized by young people. Your organization gets more attractive for them and also it's a good PR because um, yeah, big medias like TV channels and newspapers, they like stories from students, bring up um, reports about it, and that's also PR for your university. But we think the most important point is um, why it's important is for the society. Because young people are the future of every society. And let's take Germany as an example. We in our country don't have much um, raw materials like oil or gas. So the most valuable raw material of our country are young people. And when you treat your raw materials right, your valuable raw materials, um, the future of your, society, of your society may be guaranteed. Okay, guys, but let's be honest. As every, at every student's life and teenager life, there's some point where you just don't know if you're tired or bored. Yeah. And... Sometimes all you need is a wake-up call. Let us tell you how our wake-up call took place and we launched our pro uh, product to the German market. We participated at the innovation contest of the Technical University Munich for beverage and, and food. The goal was to develop a new and innovative beverage for the target market Germany. Our team met uh, at the first time at the beginning of the contest. And because we didn't know each other before, our first task was to specify our responsibilities in the team. You see here the role models uh, for a typical startup. Uh, we aren't a typical startup because we all study uh, beverage and brewing technology. Um, our team contains of five members. We have Ludwig, who um, is responsible for finance. We have Robin, who is responsible for the sales and the gastronomy. We have Patrick, who is responsible for the resource management. I'm responsible for um, 
the strategic management and sales. And Josef, he works at the brewery. He's responsible for the product management. How did we get our idea? How did we develop our idea? First, we brainstormed a lot. Uh, we got uh, over 15 ideas, I think. And uh, we did this because we uh, looked at the market. We um, looked after products we were missing. We looked after products and the, the gaps in the market portfolio. Then we sorted these ideas because of the um, technical possibilities, our personal preferences, and the innovation strength. And at this point, we got a lot of support by the contest because we got in contact with professionals uh, like the Döhler Group, like um, Weiermann Malt or Bad Haas, who each are leading companies in their specific fields. So for us, it was a huge amount of experience we got in contact with. These professionals helped us to develop our ideas and um, with our knowledge, with our market research and their experience, we defined one specific idea. We defined an idea of a blue beer mix with berry lemonade. But this is a wide range of product. There can be a lot of, um, yeah, can be a lot of modified. So we had to sharpen our ideas. At first, we tried and brewed a lot of different beer styles in our 50-liter um, home brewing station at home. Um, we tried, I think, uh, eight different beer styles, and our favorite was the uh, Cologne style because of its bright color and its light and fruity aroma. During the time, we developed our um, lemonade, our barrel lem berry lemonade with blueberry, blackberry, and cassis. So this combines to a well-balanced pro product. If you want to taste, uh, I think she... Okay. <laughs> Professor Post is trying to open it. <laughs> Can you make them super screw tops next time? <laughs> um, our recep we discussed with the professionals again because we um, hadn't the experience and we needed some consumer tests uh, that our product is the right recep, uh, recipe and fits right. Um, after this, we developed our first prototype and presented it to a professional jury in February 2014. So last year, we had our first presentation before pro um, professionals who rated our idea and the first product. Um, it had a light, lighter black color and was very, very sweet and not so very good, but we improved it very well. Um, for us, it was important that we got criticized, we got feedback and professional opinions in the course of these uh, reviews. And this was the most important part. Uh, we got to the second phase of development and of the contest because only selected groups of this content, uh, contest were allowed to, to improve their product and um, to work with these professional um, members of the contest. So there we started our real research and development phase. And Mr. Nanini before said, um, maybe there is a straight road from Beijing to Shanghai, but a lot, uh, most of the time there are a lot of obstacles you have to pass. So we faced a lot of problems, uh, technical, um, from the team, we had a lot of problems with the color because if you uh, mix a yellow beer with blue color, it gets green. So you had uh, to do some technology there. But at the end, we developed our last prototype in September 2014 and presented them to a professional jury again. And at the end, we won the finals and we won the contest. And here's a picture of the presentation ceremony uh, in November 2014. 
with the victory, a huge media interest came in Germany. The leading German newspapers, TV stations, and radio stations reported about Double Blue, and so we got the first selling customers in Germany. But we only had our 50-liter um, home brewing station, so we had to scale up, and uh, we found a pri private brewery in Germany who worked, worked with us and works with us, and um, so we had to scale up, and we had to develop our scale-up roadmap with our professional partners. Um, with the most of the professional partners, we stayed in contact. They are our business partners now, and uh, because we have trust in their high quality <coughs> and their experience. In this scale-up time frame, we had huge problems because in Germany you uh, have to use um, specific glasses, you have to um, label it right, and so on. So it was a huge amount of problems, but we solved them. We got to um, yeah, the point where we could produce our product, and this uh, we started in December 2014, so we could um, fill the first bottle in the 1st of February 2015. One of the main parts we learned through this process was get out of the building, don't hide behind your product. I think this is a main um, reason for our startups um, where yeah, you have to, to action like we did. Now, some pictures at the left side. You see the filling at the private brewery in the 1st of February. On the right-hand side, you see the shipping to our selling points to Munich. Uh, we produce in the near of Heidelberg in Germany and sell the most of it in Munich. On the left-hand side, you see the main selling product. It's a six-pack, six which uh, is yeah, very important for in Germany. And on the right-hand side, you see a presentation in a renowned hotel in Berlin. So uh, Robin will do the rest of the presentation with a little summary. So thank you very much, Kasper. And I now want to give you a little summary of, of, of our presentation to show you why and at what point young students need support. So at first, you need your wake-up call. You need to get inspired. And this can be an innovation contest like it was in our example. After this, you need to find your team. You, like to get, you, need to like, uh, you need to get together with people you like, trust, and know their strengths and weaknesses. After you found your team, um, you need to develop a bunch of ideas. You need to brainstorm, and after you have these ideas, you don't know if they work. So at this point, you need the support of professionals again. With their help, you can create a roadmap for a project and sharpen one idea. From this one idea, you can make your first prototype. And yeah, after you've developed your first prototype, it's very important that you present it to a professional judge who can tell you if your product works and if it tastes. Normally, they say you will need a lot of improvement, and at this point, you will need some uh, professional support again, where they work as mentors, give you tips, or also raw materials, which you can't buy for yourself at some times. But of course, the main work has to be done by your team, and you have to develop a last prototype. And this last prototype has to be developed by yourself so that you get to see if your knowledge and experience work. And if you present this prototype to a final judge again, they can tell you at the end if your product works and if it's ready for the market. If they say it's okay and you for yourself want to bring it to the market, um, you need to scale up to bring up an industrial production. And now that's very important. This can be a win-win situation for both sides. On the one side, the small new founded company, which get the experience from highly trained professionals, and on the other hand, for the big companies who support the startups, because they already know their products and they trust them so that they have gained a new customer. And together, you can create a final product which you can bring to the market. Um, so actually, at the beginning of our presentation, we've showed you a definition of innovation. But we think that innovation is more, and that is what we've learned during our process of developing the Bubble Blue. And we think that the uh, um, British author, John Adair, actually hits it very well. He says, innovation is more than having new ideas. It includes the process of successfully introducing them or making things happen in a new way. 
It turns ideas into useful, practicable, and commercial products or service. So thank you very much for listening, and also thank you very much to Zimba, who invited us to this great event. Yeah, it's a great honor for us to speak at this international forum, and feel free to ask your questions. Thank you for your, uh, your presentation. Are there any questions from the audience? Yeah, I need that thingy. I like that. <laughs> So thanks for your sharing of innovation experience. So I understand it started with the contest and you had a lot of trial and uh, expert feedback and then scale up. So I'm wondering, because this product is already introduced, if uh, you and your team would like to drive the second innovation, how would you proceed? And is there anything you will do differently from your first time? Yeah, actually, um, we're thinking about introducing new and other products, and we think at this point it's very important to know your customers. We try to link the online and offline world. We also have growth, great social media channels like on Facebook or Instagram, and we uh, try to get in contact to our customers so that we know what they want and what they don't like on our product. And from this base on, we are creating new products. Any other questions? So how, uh, um, you, you did get a response already on this product uh, through yeah. that, those channels. And um, you know, uh, uh, what's the percentage of positive and negative reactions? <laughs> yeah, actually, like, do we um, did a consumer test, a professional consumer test, and the acceptance of the rebuying rate of the product was around 72%. So that was actually quite high and more than we expected on the first base. And yeah, actually, like you meet, it's around 60%, 70%. Right. And was that based on taste or...? Yeah, it or? was based both on the product and taste. Um, first, uh, there were 60 customers at the age group that we prefer was from 80 to 30. And first, they only saw the product, and they have to say if they like it by coloring, by packaging. And afterwards, they tasted it and said if it fits their, their needs and if they would rebuy it after drinking the whole bottle. Okay. And um, I guess you circumvented uh, the Reinheitsgebot by not calling it beer, <laughs> but a beer mischgetrank. Yeah, but actually it's like a Radler. It's a beer mix. The beer itself is completely brewed after the Reinheitsgebot, and afterwards it's mixed with a soft drink. Right. Okay. Other question? Yes. Uh, I know in Germany, there are very strict rules regulating beer. For example, mass beer was uh, not allowed to be called uh, beer. But to change the color of the drink, you added uh, blueberries, lemon, or raspberry. Does it mean that uh, regulations have been changed to accommodate your needs? Can you still call your products beer? Actually, they haven't changed. Our drink is called Beer Mischgetränk, which means beer mixed drink. So the beer itself is completely brewed after the German purity law, and then we added some lemonade, a soft drink that we created for ourselves. And so it's beer mixed drink, and that's uh, yeah, official what's on the label in Germany. That's allowed. Any other questions? Yes. Thank you for the interesting sharing. And I guess you guys got your luggage last night. <laughs> I just wanted to know what is the most challenging difficulty that you found in this whole process? And were you able to get funding immediately for scaling up? Yeah, we think the um, really main problem was the introducement to the market. First of all, there was a, there was a scale up, um, yeah, which was a great and difficult process for us. But after um, yeah, we've, we've said we've got a great media um, attraction after the contest, but of course the media don't report about your product every time. So we sold our um, first charge of the product, 
and then there was no media interest, and so the most important and challenging part for us is the marketing now, to get it to our customers, to hit the right customers, and yeah, that's also the problems we are challenging right now, and yeah, we gain experience from day to day, and hope we manage it to the best. Yeah. Very simple question. What is the alcoholic content? How much is the alcoholic content? It's 2.9% by volume. That's too low. Oh. <laughs> it's a perfect summer drink, actually, when you sit at the sea or at the beach or even in your garden. It's perfect. Okay. <laughs> no more questions? I think this is actually a fine example of how a, a challenge uh, can work among... Uh, young people in a university is a great way of um, um, steering up sort of innovation. It's just one more simple question. Of dream about this kind of blue, it's natural color? Um, no, actually it's no um, natural color, but um, we don't want it and we don't promote it like this because the German market is flooded with biological products. Of course, everybody likes them, but we just um, want to do something against it with a light blink of the eyes. But actually, the blue color was a real challenge because if you ju just put blue food coloring into the yellow beer, it turns green. And so it's uh, actually uh, really the first blue beer mix on the German market.